hello everyone my name is Chuck this is Eris Capades and it's scorching hot outside so I'm under the shade again it's almost maybe about 40 degrees Celsius right here in Melbourne and tomorrow it's going to be worse it should be going up around 45 degrees so yeah we have to stay cool man Now considering the weather, it's very ironic that today's episode is about winter and this is mainly in response to a question posed by Oscarino, one of my Patreon sponsors and his question goes Hey Chuck, I had some questions for you about succulents during winter. I live in Northern California so we get a good amount of rain during the winter time and during the coldest parts it gets around 30 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. That should be around negative 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. So around the freezing point. This is my first winter where I have a lot of plants outside that are in pots and arrangements rather than just in the ground. Last year, all of my in-ground succulents did fine with the rain and I didn't lose any. I have given my potted succulents an extra gritty mix for this reason but I was wondering if even with the gritty mix, I should provide protection from the rain. During your winter, do you have to move your potted plants under protection or is your mix good enough to keep plants from rotting? Thanks. So Oscar is from Northern California and after doing a bit of research, I found out that we have a similar climate. So in this episode, we're going to discuss zones 9 and 10, and that includes 9A, 9B, 10A, and 10B. And a disclaimer, my climate here is closer to somewhere in between 10A and 10B, closer to 10B I guess for the most part, but we do get... Um, for the past few winters that I've experienced so far, I've been getting some of the temperature temperature range of 10A. So, you know, it varies. I would imagine that Oscarino is in 10A or maybe 9B. I'm not really sure because the basic idea here is that although it does go at the freezing or just below freezing point, it's still not enough cold for it to snow. So we still experience precipitation in the form of rain rather than snow. It's the same situation here in Melbourne. Instead of snow, we have lots of rain. However, if you go out to the Alpine regions in Melbourne, where I am right now, we're at the lowlands, at the plains. In the Alpine regions, it can go a lot colder, and of course, it snows there. Again, to answer Oscar's questions, it looks like we are in the same climate, or at least we have a similar climate. We seem to have the same range for the coldest parts of winter. And in those coldest parts, I find that I do not have to do anything special aside from just making sure the usual stuff. They should have enough airflow and enough ventilation. That's the same thing, actually. They should be well draining and have enough airflow, ventilation. So the well draining part ensures that it does not stay waterlogged. Um, the air pockets between the rocks in the gritty mix are always empty. It's always air. It's not filled with, uh, with water. That way the roots, the plant does not suffocate in water. Your main enemy during this time would be the humidity and fungus. So this is why good ventilation is a must. You don't have to worry much about frost at this stage because at this point they melt quite easy during the day. I created a bunch of videos about this before about how to cope with the frost and there were a few tricks that were passed on to me from a friend who lived in the colder parts of Victoria. The first thing he told me was to plant the plants at an angle. So in the case of Echeverias, let's say you have this one. If you have them at the ground, plant them this way. Or in the case of pots, you could just stagger them like this. The basic idea here is that frost is fluid. It's not really, it does not really stick to things. So as it melts, it can slide off. So by putting your plants at a slight angle, you're allowing gravity to assist uh, with the sliding off of the frost. So if you, have, if you have your plants in pots like these, you could just add a piece of rock, stone underneath, and that way it stands at an angle like this. Otherwise, if you're planting them in the ground, do a little slope. And not only does that help with frost, it also helps with excess water, the runoff, because which leads me to the second point. Make sure you mound in front of the plants if you're planting them in the ground. That would give them a bit of airflow because 
with a mound let's say this is your garden bed and you dug a little trench in front and the flats are here when you have a mound it means that any air any wind would be forced would be directed upwards and this aids with the airflow so if you would imagine the wind goes this way and it gets deflected by the mound it goes upwards ventilation right there and thirdly a third tip that would be really helpful in winter conditions such as ours would be uh, preventive maintenance for in terms of fungus so apply fungicides early if you think it's going to be moist and very humid especially if you're not able to clear up underneath the plants say you don't have the time to do it it's still best if you remove all of the dead leaves underneath just so you can give them a lot of airflow but if you can't do that you could just apply some systemic fungicides or whatever some types of fungi are more fatal to the plant than others but there are others that aren't but in any case in garden centers or in your local nurseries you might find fungicides that would target the harmful types of fungi. So basically what I'm saying is that in winter, I do not worry much about my plants being out in the open. I just make sure that they have a gritty mix and they have a lots of space underneath, a lot, lot of airflow. And as long as you ensure that those two conditions are met, then feel free to leave them out in the open. I do this myself because that saves me from having to water my plants, the rain, you know. And any frost that forms overnight when they melt in the morning, that would be additional moisture. So. It really cuts down on my watering. In fact, during winter, I do not water at all, except maybe some of my seedlings and some of the younger plants because they would need a lot more water, a lot more humidity to stay healthy. If you aren't sure how your plants would do outdoors, you could always do the indicator plant technique. I've discussed that in one of my past episodes, so please have a look at that. And to drive the point home, here's Sheila from Succulent Fame, and she lives in Zone 9B, somewhere in California. Pretty close to Oscar, I guess. Let's hear what she has to say. Hi Chuck, hello Sarah's Capades community. Today, I'm going to share with you how I take care of my succulents in the winter. Winter here in California means lots of rain except when there's drought. Since rainwater offers optimum amount of electrolytes and nutrients that our succulents need, I gather as much rain as I could. In the winter, I'm always watching the weather because this is not very good news if we just watered our succulents but this is just exactly the news that we need when it's time to water them the soil in this pot still has moisture this pot gets to stay under the tarp while some of these pots get to stay within the warmth of our house because it gets really really moist out here in the winter we can get thick fog and frost in the early mornings my son is helping me check all of the pots for moisture and then it suddenly started to rain one hour ahead of forecast and we had to move fast. I had to set my cam by the door or else I won't even have this video clip for check. This tarp actually serves to protect these succulents from rain and frost. We also get howling winds in the winter, so this tarp needs to be pinned down under the weight of these racks. So some of the succulents get to stay indoors, some gets the rain, and the tough succulents get to stay under the tarp. And this is how much fun it gets in a snowless winter in California. Thank you so much Chuck for this collaboration. This is Sheila again for Succulent Fame. Back to you Chuck. Thank you Sheila. And that's it for this discussion today. I'm sure you're wondering about this plants and the label here. I got these plants during the recent CSSA, Cactus and Succulent Society of Australia meeting. I couldn't help it. This is an Echeveria rognonii and the cultivar was labeled Texas Rose but they are all the same basically. This is an Echeveria gilva, others list it as an Agavoides but this is a hybrid. One of the parents is an Agavoides but I'm not sure what the other is. This is an Echeveria colorata brantii, I have a larger brantii in the ground and in one of the pots there. But I bought a pup, a younger plant, because why not? This is an Ebony, Agavoides Ebony and I'm lucky that I found one really cheap. Another Kante, because I can never have enough Nakante. <laughs> I'll have to let it grow though, so I could add it into my garden. And finally, this is a, a hybrid of the Purposorum. And from the label, it says that this is the gray form. Although right now, it's mostly green, because it has been grown in the shade. But it, it, it's interesting to see what it would look like once it achieves the right color. Because gray, you know? And in the next episode, continuing on what we discussed today, I think 
a good topic for uh, another mini series of videos would be how to deal with diseases in plants and that, that could be pests, insects and fungus and maybe other stuff so we'll see about that thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode bye special thanks to my patreon supporters at oscarino julie seal snap kui lorena noti camila Baez, linda leal gwen hot jesse may you too and everyone else who pledge on patreon thank you so much and finally you can check out my instagram that's at series and i post a photo of an echeveria every single day under the hashtag daily echeveria